So what I'd like to do now is share five lessons from the civil rights movement that I believe are applicable to health. The first lesson is that change takes time and we really must take every opportunity to accelerate change. It took from 1870 to 1965 for blacks to gain the right to vote, but there were absolutely clear moments in time when change was accelerated, as with the marches in Selma. Today in health, we need to accelerate change. This leads us to the second lesson. It's a compelling vision and inspiring leadership that motivates and sustains us as we work towards our goals. Today, we need a grander, a more ambitious vision for health, and we need leaders willing to step up and help us realize those goals. The third lesson is that true change rarely comes from the halls of Congress alone. Laws are absolutely essential, but insufficient to make true change. It took the courage and the determination and the belief in a larger vision by communities of people to get the leaders of the government to understand that the laws on the books were not enough. The movement had the visionary leadership of Dr. Martin Luther King, but as great of a leader as he was, he alone could not get President Johnson to agree to push for a Voting Rights Act in 1965. It was acts of men women and children in Selma, Alabama. It was the physicians who led the work in desegregating healthcare facilities. It was the Fannie Lou Hamers of the movement, a poor woman who had been sterilized when she saw a doctor for stomach pain, who became a leader and whose Mississippi Democratic Party threatened to unseat the segregated Mississippi delegation in the 1964 Democratic National Convention. It was a movement with leadership at all levels. Today, we need a movement for health that engages all of us. The fourth lesson, it's critical that we move beyond the individual and embrace the notion that most change must occur at the societal level. In 1965, President Johnson finally recognized that the Civil Rights of 19, Acts of 1964 was not enough. In his famous Voting Rights Act speech to a joint session of Congress, Lyndon Johnson uttered those famous words. There is no Negro problem. There is no Southern problem. There is no Northern problem. There's only an American problem. Johnson ends this landmark speech by saying, this great, rich, restless country can offer opportunity and education and hope to all, all black and white, all north and south, sharecropper and city dweller. These are the enemies, poverty, ignorance, disease. They are our enemies. And these enemies too, poverty, disease, and ignorance, we shall overcome. A hundred years after the end of the Civil War, he laid down the gauntlet. This awakening would lay the foundation for the great society and the war on poverty, made possible by his leadership and the leadership of King and others. They stepped into the fray and created a partnership between the movement and the government. As the leader of the free world, he would go on to describe a vision a vision that embraced a societal approach. The great society of which the war on poverty was the signature. Today is the time to address health as a society. And this leads me to the fifth lesson, the need for innovation. The civil rights movement used a new set of tools, nonviolent protests, collaboration among disparate groups, and the media. Leadership was redefined as both leadership from the top but also from that grassroots. Leaders of the civil rights movement also understood the power of the media, harnessing it by using a combination of nonviolent methods and the media to influence public opinion. 
Just remember those indelible images in Selma on Bloody Sunday, the tear gas and the beatings with billy clubs, and remember that all of America watched. Powerful images that are forever engraved in our collective memories. Today, what will be the new generation of images that we use, that we will create? What will we do to bring innovation to creating a healthy America? So how can these lessons guide us in a movement for health? It's a movement that really is my dream. Change takes time, but we must accelerate the change. The journey to enable all people in the United States to have access to health care has been a long one, and we are closer than ever. It was in the 1950s that older Americans started agitating for government-funded uh, health care. The first major step in this journey was the passing of the legislation that uh, created Medicare and Medicaid. And this was part of Johnson's Great Society. But it has taken over 50 years for us to pass the Affordable Care Act of 2009. And the journey isn't over. Just as with the tremendous resistance that, and backlash that occurred before and after the passage of the law that created Medicare and Medicaid, there's been tremendous upheaval and threats of repealing the Affordable Care Act. Again, remember that it was just last week that a judge in Florida ruled against the individual mandate, the second judge to rule in this way, but he went even further. He ruled that the entire Affordable Care Act is unconstitutional. We've also seen the House of Representatives take up the charge to repeal the law. So I ask us, can these threats, this type of upheaval, provide the impetus for accelerated change in the most positive of ways? Can it galvanize us in ways that we have not and could not imagine? Can it galvanize us to a larger vision? So this leads us to the second lesson, the need for a compelling vision, a vision that will both motivate us and sustain us. What is our vision? Dr. Alvin Poussant led the work of the Medical Committee for Human Rights in Mississippi and worked hard to implement the civil rights laws. They did this by reporting segregation in healthcare facilities that receive federal dollars and their work towards a greater end, equality, and a healthy black population was so critically important, but they did have that larger vision. Health was an organizing principle for civil rights. So a compelling vision of a healthy United States, a vision of healthy people, our most precious resource, a healthy people across different races, ethnicities, sex, social classes, a vision rooted in the belief in equality and social justice, can and should compel us and should sustain us through the struggles ahead. If health is a vision, if it's the vision, do we have the compelling platform to take up this charge? I want to give you some of the facts. The United States ranks 37th out of 191 developed countries in health status, according to the World Health Organization. We're 24th in life expectancy in the developed world. Our health system performed, performance ranked last out of the seven most developed countries, and this is mostly because of cost, we rank sixth out of seventh for quality. Shocking. We rank 46th for infant mortality. Our next generation is at risk for being the first since we became a nation to be less healthy and to have a shorter life expectancy than the generation before it. And these statistics don't even begin to highlight the racial and ethnic disparities that are present in health. African Americans make up 13% of the US population, but they account for 49% of the HIV AIDS cases. Hispanic women are twice as likely to be diagnosed with cervical cancer as white women. Compared to the general US population, American Indians are 400% more likely to contract tuberculosis and 291% more likely to suffer from diabetes. 
Death rates for African American adults are 55% higher than they are for whites. And black women are far more likely to die under the age of 50 of cardiovascular disease compared with the general population. Health overall and equity in health is the unfinished work of the civil rights movement. To quote Lyndon Johnson, this is an American problem. <laughs>